TIG TV News Update. I'm Donna Bush. Thanks for joining us as always. Last week, four UK MPs paid a visit to the Cayman Islands and just hours after their arrival on Thursday afternoon, MPs Andrew Rosendale, Henry Smith, Colonel Bob Stewart and Martin Vickers started a whirlwind schedule of events through Sunday. Members of the all-party group for the Cayman Islands and overseas territories traveled to Cayman Brack on Saturday, spending the day touring the sister island. With the MPs on the tour was Deputy Premier and Minister for Tourism, the Honorable Moses Kukarnal. Well, they're friends of Cayman and they understand Cayman. We believe that we have a, a lot of special features to Cayman. Our economy is extremely strong. Um, we are in the right place and the right space for our economy right now, for our people, our quality of life, and we believe that Working together and farthering that relationship is what we need to foster. The group made stops at the Heritage House, the Bluff Farm, the Lighthouse, the Port Authority and Faith Hospital, just to name a few places. They also met many residents while on Kim and Brack. Chairman of the all-party group for the Overseas Territories, MP Andrew Rosendale, spoke with our CIG TV crew while on Kim and Brack. He had this to say. Well, first of all, it's a wonderful privilege for British members of Parliament to be able to come to see one of the UK's overseas territories and undoubtedly one of the best overseas territories. We can see how the government of Cayman is doing a tremendous job in making sure that we have an overseas territory of which there's no concerns. We have 19 overseas territories and many of them do have issues. Cayman does not. They are self-financing, they have good governance, uh, they have a rule of law. So this proves that an overseas territory can work and is a model here in Cayman of how a British overseas territory should operate. Well, I've been fortunate. I've come here three times. So this is my third visit in the last 12 years. And I can see a territory that is expanding, that's growing in its prosperity, and that's playing a wider role. For instance, we saw the work that was carried out at the time of Hurricane Irma and how the helicopter and other efforts were made to assist people on Turks and Caicos Islands and in the region generally. So Cayman is playing its part and we're very proud of what Cayman is doing but it is a British overseas territory and therefore it's very important that Cayman and the United Kingdom understand each other, that we work together. That doesn't mean we tell Cayman what to do, on the contrary. You have self-determination, and your right to govern your own affairs. But it's important that that relationship that we have between here and London is very strong and we understand where we're coming from and we work together in our common interests as British people. Before they departed the Cayman Islands on Sunday, the four MPs toured and learned about the Blue Iguana Recovery Project at the Botanic Park. They were joined by Minister the Honourable Dwayne Seymour. From there, the group made a stop at Health City Cayman Islands. Before the group of MPs departed the Cayman Islands for the UK, they shared with us the highlights of their trip, what they experienced, and their thoughts on the Cayman-UK relationship. Uh, we've learned an awful lot about uh, the financial service in the industry and how you regulate it, and that's been very impressive. Uh, we've also uh, discussed with uh, government members the uh, relationship between the UK and the Cayman Islands, and it's quite clear that uh, uh, we want to establish a, a clear partnership of equals between them. Uh, you are a model democracy, well governed, and I think the relationship uh, certainly needs developing somewhat. Um, and you're very impressive, and that's the message I think we'll be passing on to our government. The highlight of my trip has been being here. I have never been to a place like this. This is nirvana, frankly. Everything I've seen has been excellent government seems to work, the people have work and intermingle extremely well. Uh, the place has got a perfect climate and to be honest I think we've got one hell of a lot to learn from this British overseas territory back in UK. The thing I really take away uh, from this latest visit to the Cayman Islands is just how well governed and what a good society that it is, a uh, prospering uh, economy, uh, a real gem in the whole of the Caribbean region. But also what I take away is the fact that the Foreign and Commonwealth Office in London and the British government more generally needs to pay much higher respect to overseas territories like the Cayman Islands uh, and really see the islands 
uh, as part of the British family as equals and very much respect uh, what Cayman does so well. On Thursday, just after arriving, a reception was held for members of the all-party parliament group for the Cayman Islands. They also had the opportunity to be a part of a turtle release on the beach. They paid a, a brief visit to acting governor, the Honorable Franz Manderson, and then met up with officials in the cabinet office. Friday's schedule had them visiting the Speaker of the House, the Honorable Makiva Bush, as well as MLAs, ministers, and opposition leaders. They also had meetings with representatives from the financial services sector, tourism, and healthcare industry industries. Now, the four-day um, visit is designed to educate them on Cayman's culture, economy, and the special relationship with the United Kingdom. Mr. Eric Bush, the Cayman Islands representative to the United Kingdom, led the visit. MPs also heard about hurricane preparedness, disaster relief, and management systems right here in the Cayman Islands. Well, finally, the Health Services Authority is reporting that mental health and emergency medical services providers have confirmed that there's an increase in the number of persons requiring mental health care here in the Cayman Islands. During an information uh, sharing session recently held at the Cayman Islands Hospital, staff of the HSA and Department of Counseling Services discussed how they can collaborate more effectively to meet the increasing mental health needs of people here in our islands. Dr. Arlene McGill, head of psychiatry and behavioral health services at the HSA, says if our services do not integrate, they can become fragmented and duplicated and a person's care can be compromised. She added the participants of the information sharing session agreed that over the last 10 years, mental health awareness has been blossoming on the island as a result of the initiatives and programs of public and private organizations working to end the stigma of mental illness. Well, for a look at our weekly schedule of shows here on CIG Television, you can go online to gis.gov.ky and click on the publications link at the bottom of the home page. If you missed today's news update, you can go to the Cayman Islands Government Facebook page as well as the CIG Television YouTube channel. With your CIG TV news update for this Monday evening, I'm Donna Bush, as always, thanking you for joining us, wishing you a wonderful and safe night, and hoping you'll join us back here again tomorrow. Until then, bye-bye for now. The Esterly Tibbetts Highway three-lane roundabout is ready for drivers. It's time to make sure you know how to use it. First, know which exit you need to take. Pay attention to lane arrows and signs. Make sure you use your signal to change lanes or exit the roundabout. To turn left, you always approach in the left-hand lane and indicate left. To drive straight ahead, you need to be looking out for signs and road markings indicating which lane to use. Get in one of the lanes marked with a straight through arrow. If turning right, you must use the right hand lane and indicate accordingly. To use the roundabout safely, remember these three tips. Know your exit, pick your lane, and signal to make your turn. Did you know your mailing address details on your land register must be up to date in order to receive notices on new development which may impact you? Visit Lands and Survey Department to check your mailing address is correct. Did you know that walls, fences located along the road require planning permission no matter the height? You should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required. Did you know that fences and walls within the high water setback require planning permission no matter the height? You should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required. Did you know that a trellis structure requires planning permission? You should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required. Did you know that a deck more than six inches above finished grade requires planning permission? Did you know you should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required?